Hi, Steve here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use the dodge and burn tools in Photoshop. And then after that, I'll show you how to use those basics to start making some subtle changes to your landscape photos that will help you guide and direct your viewer's eye to where you want them to look at in your frame. The concept is similar to using a vignette to darken the edge of your shots, which in turn brings more attention towards the center. But dodging and burning is a much more controlled way to achieve this effect in a more subtle and undetectable way. We'll start off with the dodge tool. The, uh, the idea in a nutshell of both of these tools, the dodge tool and the burn tool, is to use them to either brighten or to darken parts of your image. So you can just brush around and wherever you're brushing it's, uh, it's either going to brighten or darken that part of the image. So it's got all the same controls in terms of the brush size and shape and hardness and softness and all that stuff. So let's just get straight on with what it actually does and how we use it. So you've got this drop down here, so there's three options, and then you've got an exposure option here. So we're on the dodge tool, and so whatever we brush into is going to basically uh, is going to be brightened. But the way that it works, it divides it into whether we're going to brighten the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So let's say, for example, we choose the shadows option here in this drop down. And just one thing I didn't mention yet is that these tools, the dodge and burn, they need to be done on pixel layers. So this is not a non-destructive edit. And just to make sure we don't do anything that's not reversible, we'll be working on a copy of our background. So just as an extreme example, I'm going to boost the exposure here. And this basically just means the strength of the brush and the effect and what it's doing. So exposure on about 40%, which doesn't sound high, but for this tool it is actually quite a high value. And shadows, so let me just increase the brush size here. Now I'm going to start off, I'm going to brush into this part here, which is actually quite a bright part of the image. And you can see it's not actually making very much of a difference. It is brightening it slightly. And let me just do the same up here in the sky. In fact, that's probably a better example. So even though I'm brushing here backwards and forwards, it's not really doing very much at all. And that's because this is a bright part of the image already, and we've got the shadows selected here. However, if I just contrast that with using the brush up in the top corner here, where it's, uh, where it's a lot darker to begin with, then you know we can see that it's having a much bigger effect. Now let's just contrast that with the highlights. So I'll select the highlights from the drop down there. And now as I brush into the sky, we should see quite a significant uh, brightening effect happening there in the sky. And just the opposite end of the scale to that. Now, if I use this tool in the shadows here, it's not really doing much at all. And that's because we're brushing into the shadows, but the brush is only affecting any highlights that we happen to brush over. So that's the shadows and the highlights, and basically the mid-tones, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it so that it uh, works on the sort of middle ground. So not the extreme highlights or the extreme shadows, but it's going to brighten everything in between. So uh, yeah, I'm making a bit of a dog's dinner of this image at the moment, but just, just to serve as an example of what these uh, brushes do. So that's, that's the dodge tool. The reverse of that is the burn tool. It works in exactly the same way with these drop downs here. So the brush, if we have it affecting the shadows only, then if I brush up here, it's not going to darken the sky very much at all because it's not really a shadow. But if I come over here, it's going to turn these shadows virtually black straight away because we're using such a high exposure into what is already a very dark part of the shot. And again, highlights, we're going to darken this sky quite a lot because it's a highlight and that's what we've got selected there. Now this tick box here, protect tones, I, I usually have that selected. Actually, I have it selected most of the time. Yeah, if we just hover over that with the mouse there, it says it minimizes clipping in the shadows and highlights and keeps colors from shifting their hue. So let me just undo this. I'll create a new background layer and we can show the difference between 
what this uh, what having this selected does. Actually, let's just swap over to the dodge tool. It might be easier to uh, to demonstrate this with the dodge tool, and we'll go to 100%. So I'm going to just actually make a second copy. So this top layer here that I've got, we're going to use the protect tones, and I'm just going to do one brush stroke across this patch of grass here. So as you can see, it's brightened it up quite a lot, but it's still within the realms of uh, you know looking realistic because it's it's tried to blend that brush stroke in and uh, you know and not blow any of those highlights or shadows. Now let me just hide this layer and I'll do the same thing without this selected on this background copy layer. So here you can see as I do that brush stroke and then move back just like I did for the previous attempt it's brightening it all up but yeah it's just not quite doing such a good job so if I just use this uh, top layer here now as an example it's kind of washing everything out um, you know when we haven't got that tones selected there that protect tones and you know for me I just find the uh, I just find it more useful with that selected and then really these two options here, this airbrush thing here, and then this uh, pen pressure option here, that's, uh, that, that's the same, um, yeah, that works in the same way as previously when we talked about that for the brushes uh, earlier on in the video course. So that's a quick uh, sort of explanation of how this works. Now, when would you want to do this and why? Well, the most common uses for dodging and burning is to to really just control where the light is in your image so say for example people use a vignette which is to darken the edge of your uh, image and so that the uh, so the center of the image is more pronounced and it sort of has more of the attention drawn to it because the edges of the shot are dark the idea behind dodging and burning is that you can kind of go for that same effect but just brushing in the darkness and the brightness where you want it. So let's say, for example, I wanted to like, darken the uh, this foreground here, so it's quite bright at the moment. Let's say I wanted to darken that so that the eye isn't quite so drawn to it. So uh, I'll select the Burn tool, and I'll probably start off with the midtones. And usually, if I'm if I'm using either of these tools on more than 10% exposure, then uh, yeah, it's quite an extreme case. So I'll just start off on 10%. It might be too much for now, but the idea here is to just gradually build up. Don't try and do too much with one brush stroke because then it starts to look a bit obvious. So I'm just darkening the midtones there. Maybe we'll just go after some highlights now, just because over here it's quite bright still in these uh, leaves. And it's doing quite a subtle job. It's nice. It's not really, uh, you know, it's not really looking like I've darkened it all that much as I go along. And you know, it's not really until we hide this layer and then reactivate it again that we see the difference it's made. So it's a real subtle way of blending in that darkness. And let's say we want to go the other way with this uh, this bit of grass and rocks here in the foreground. I'll move the exposure down, let's say 10% again. Start off with the midtones this time. So let's see what we can do by just brightening the midtones a little bit. It's quite nice there. And then maybe we'll go for the uh, highlights just to add a bit of punch. And there we can see we're just manipulating the light within the image just by. Uh, just by sort of brightening and darkening selectively like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this short video tutorial. If you like shooting landscapes and you want to learn how to put all these individual tips and techniques that you're learning into a structured six step Photoshop workflow, then click the download button and I'll send you my free PDF cheat sheet that lays everything out for you step by step.